Welcome everybody to the Moldex 3D webinar series. I thank each and every one of you for coming out. We have a lot of participants today and uh, today we're going to be talking about warpage. So how can we run a successful warpage analysis even when we're going into the part design phase? So when we're upstream, the part isn't in production yet. It's just kind of a philosophy that hasn't really developed into anything uh, physical as of yet. So how do we actually run simulation and how do we get an accurate reflection of what's actually going to be our final part. So my name is Alex Baker. Like I mentioned, I work in the Moldex 3D North America office, senior applications engineer. Uh, I do a bunch of simulations and trainings and stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that at the end though. So we're going to start with the six major causes of warpage. Uh, what are they? So first of all, I'm going to go, I'm going to start from this guy right here. Part design, mold design, process conditions. You probably already saw these on the agenda screen, but <laughs> polymer PVT, fiber orientation, and residual stress. So all six of these are going to contribute to the anisotropic effect of shrinkage on the part. So that's ultimately what warpage is. So if you're a part designer, maybe you're not as familiar, maybe you've seen a part that is warped, but maybe you don't know exactly why that happens. This is gonna be a great bit of information for you because it'll give it'll kind of open your eyes as to all of the different effects and all of the different realms of the molding world that will go into the final molded part um, and how this warpage, or as we call it, a uh, differential shrinkage how this sort of phenomenon occurs in our final part. All right, so to start out with part design, uh, so this is kind of the fundamental starting point for all of the molding process, uh, or I guess for the entire design process. So first of all, uh, as far as the part design, there's three main contributors that go into the final shrinkage variance in the part. The first one is the thickness distribution. The ability of the heat to escape the part is dependent on how thick the part is. Um, so if we're able to get a nice uniform thickness, then we're able to cool down the part uniformly or more accurately, that heat is able to be released from the center of the part uniformly and that will uh, influence your shrinkage distribution one way or the other. The second one is your wall angle. Uh, so the ability of heat to escape the different regions of the mold is going to be impacted by how the uh, the angles of the part, how the angles of the wall are connecting to one another. 